Welcome to Between the Lines podcast. I'm Jess. And I'm Janine. And we both work at the Winkler branch of the South Central Regional Library. In this podcast, we talk about books with our own twist. We talk about just the first half and predict where it might be going. And finish reading the book and discuss the second half. There will be snark, there will be spoilers, and depending on the book, there may be references to violence, sex, or other adult topics. So if that's not for you, stop listening now. All right, let's get into this week's book. All right. So today we are going to be talking about Spare by Prince Harry. It was one of the most searing images of the 20th century. Two young boys, two princes, walking behind their mother's coffin as the world watched in sorrow and horror. As Princess Diana was laid to rest, billions wondered what Prince William and Prince Harry must be thinking and feeling and how their lives would play out from that point on. For Harry, this is that story at last. Before losing his mother, 12-year-old Prince Harry was known as the carefree one, the happy-go-lucky spare to the more serious heir. Grief changed everything. He struggled at school, struggled with anger, with loneliness, and because he blamed the press for his mother's death, he struggled to accept life in the spotlight. At 21, he joined the British Army. The discipline gave him structure and two combat tours made him a hero at home. But he soon felt more lost than ever, suffering from post-traumatic stress and prone to crippling panic attacks. Above all, he couldn't find true love. Then he met Megan. The world was swept away by the couple's cinematic romance and rejoiced in their fairy tale wedding. But from the beginning, Harry and Meghan were preyed upon by the press, subjected to waves of abuse, racism, and lies. Watching his wife suffer, their safety and mental health at risk, Harry saw no other way to prevent the tragedy of history repeating itself but to flee his mother country. Over the centuries, leaving the royal family was an act few had dared. The last to try, in fact, had been his mother. For the first time, Prince Harry tells his own story, chronicling his journey with raw, unflinching honesty. A landmark publication, Spare is full of insight, revelation, self-examination, and hard-won wisdom about the eternal power of love over grief. So this book is Prince Harry's first. Uh, However, it was ghostwritten by J.R. Moringer. In regards to the truthfulness of this memoir, Harry said that, whatever the cause, my memory is my memory. It does what it does gathers and curates as it sees fit and there's just as much truth in what i remember and how i remember it as there is in so-called objective facts so let's get into it (laughs) i know you have thoughts i have thoughts my very first thought i was like a chapter in or maybe two and i thought to myself i really wish prince william would write a book called air (laughs) i had the same thought we're going okay i want William out of the story of this because he yeah. is not driving. But yeah, he needs to call it air and he needs to have a similar picture on the front yes, yes. as well. That's the thing. Uh, the front cover is Harry's face. And my first thought was, A, your eyes are very close together. <laughs> also, why is he squinting? It looks like he's squinting. Kind of. He looks defensive. Um, and I thought you weren't a prince anymore, buddy boy. Oh, no, he's still a prince. He's still a prince? Yeah, he's not a working royal. Ah, oh, But he will me. always be a prince. Okay. Because his dad is the king. Uh, pardon me. But either way, he could have published it for all his insistence and their insistence that we want to be left alone, we want to live a quiet life, we, you know, don't like the press. Um, you're really trading up your name there. Yeah. I mean, it's hard not to, though. Like... I feel like nearly everybody in the world knows who he is. Yeah. So. But. If you splash your face all over the cover like that, people are going to know whether you say by Prince Harry or not. Yeah. My objection is more with the fact that you keep talking about how you want to be left alone and then you write a book that you know is going to cause a scandal, that you know is going to be a press thing. And sure, you're trying to set the story straight, but do you do you not want to be left alone? Yeah. Like. If it's me and I want to be left alone, I shut my mouth. Yeah. I stay true. in my little cabin in the woods <laughs> and live my quiet little life. I don't write a book about it. I don't write a book about <laughs> how everybody hurt me in my entire life. I uh, I have to admit going in that um, there's so much press about Harry and this book. And so it's really hard not to go into this with a certain amount of bias. I've stayed out of it pretty much. Like I know very, very little I, I know that this book exists. I follow a few people on social media who have read the book to 
specifically who have, or I don't know if the one has read it, but has very strong opinions about Harry and Meghan specifically, Mm -hmm. loves the royal family, is not fond of Harry and Meghan. And the other person loves the royal family, loves this book, thinks it's amazing, whatever. So like two very different opinions um, on this story. And so like my tendency is to be more skeptical and be like, eh, you know, yeah, is, is this truthful? Is this, do we need to be talking about all this? Do I feel sorry for him? No, I, I don't. don't. I don't feel sorry for him at all. I have a lot of conflicting feelings about this book and this person because... I feel sorry for the kid whose mother died. Yes, that sucks. But there's a point where I'm going, your life is what you make it. Right. But imagine your mom dies and the whole world is watching you and watching how you deal with yes, that. Yes, and I feel bad for that kid. But that think about how that would affect you growing up, like as an adult even. like Basically, he's lived his life under a microscope, his mm-hmm. entire life. And so... That's why I feel so conflicted. Do I think he's handled everything properly? No. no. I don't but understand like, fame to begin with. And that, no. to me, is just a little bit weird. But imagine if that's your life. You know, and any time something big happens in your life, there's just hordes of people there constantly. Mm-hmm. And you have to deal with all the biggest things in your life under that microscope. Yeah. Entirely. That affects a person. And so maybe he is the way he is because of that. He... I don't it think... It definitely will have affected him and his outlook and that kind of thing. But there is a point where you're going, stop making excuses. You put on a Nazi uniform. Okay. There is no way There's in no hell... There's no excuse for that. ...that you didn't understand what you were doing. Yeah. And the ramifications of that. Okay. Like... So that there is no excuse for. But I also don't think that he has had a stable, guiding adult in no. his life to help him. Like, his dad... If there was a stable guiding ad- adult, it sounded like Marco. Yeah. But, like, nobody to really be uh, a role model mm-hmm. for him. Like, his dad was very much, ignore the press, we shove it under the rug, we don't talk about it. Like, the press is going to do what the press is going to do. We're not going to fight back. We're not going to do any of that stuff. Yeah. And I think, like, he always says, when he talks about his dad, he always says his dad refers to him as my darling boy. Mm-hmm. Which, which got me, pretty creepy pretty quick. <laughs> well... After a while, I was like, that sounds very, like, gentle and nice and, like, mm-hmm. not the picture I have of Charles in my head at all. No, he always seemed a bit more of the, um, well, let the nanny deal with the children. But I do get the sense that he was very hands-off. Yeah. Right? And so his way of dealing with things, I don't think he was, Harry was ever taught, like, or never had a good role model in his life. His normal was Diana, and yeah. Diana was gone. Yeah. And just when he needed normal and growing up puberty years and that kind of thing where things start to get rough, she poofed and he had to deal with all this extra stuff. Yeah. that Yes, that sucks. It really does. But my impression of this book, reading the first half, was, oh my, does this guy not have any consequences? Hmm. Like, A, I hate the book, the way this book was written. I, it drives me nuts. But say, for example, there was one antidote he tells... Antidote... Anecdote. An anecdote. <laughs> One antidote to, to the venom and the poison. <laughs> One antidote that he tells um, about him and William playing with the father's friends' kids or whatever, and they're playing on this building site and they're like sh- throwing firecrackers and stuff like that. And the one kid falls in a hole and they thought, oh, great, perfect opportunity to throw firecrackers at him. And that's just where it cut off. And I'm going, you threw explosives at a kid. Yeah. I don't care if you are royal. What were the consequences? But they were all doing it. Wasn't just him. Though, well, I don't it? care if they were all doing it. <laughs> well, I know. If that was my I'm kid, just, you're having consequences I either know. way. I know. But, like, every story that he tells where there's something like that happening, it cuts off before there's any kind of consequences, any kind of, you know, and then I got grounded for a week, or I had my favorite toy taken away, or, well, turns out, uh, you know, I actually had to make actual reparations and apologies for this. Well, he did, he did talk about that when he put on the Nazi uniform. Yeah, because he was forced to. Yeah. But, but like... For the majority of the stuff that, like, of the stories that he tells, and granted, I know it's a small sample size, there's not any kind of lasting consequence to go, hey, Harry, let's can the mustaches, shall we? Like, maybe apologize to the kid that you're throwing firecrackers at. Like, that kind but of thing. you don't thing. know that he didn't either. But my point is, if, if your entire, if, if your point of this book is to help people understand you and that kind of thing, 
you put in the consequences if there were any you don't just fade to black every time but i also think you have to look at it in the lens of what like we will never know oh no what it's like to live under that type of scrutiny ever like and i think as much as i think that he is spoiled and entitled Mm -hmm. i also think uh, i don't know like he didn't sign up for this he did not that's the thing on the one hand i go well it's just like any other kind of world leader or anything where you're put under a microscope and that kind of thing but at the same time he didn't choose this he didn't Mm -mm. decide that i want to be a prince he was born into it so there's an element of you know you got to deal with it on the other hand there's a lot of other royals that were also born into it and yes i know he is pretty close to the throne and direct in line that kind of mm-hmm. thing so there's always going to be more but if you look at some of the other royals they are managing to live lives without being in the press every five seconds well, not and managing to still kind of right maintain a level of normal andrew being the exception <laughs> all the things you think about andrew might not be true either <laughs> i give everything a grain of salt and by but, that i mean the dead sea on top <laughs> but like that's true and maybe he doesn't handle everything the way that he should yeah but i hit a point where i'm going yes your mother died yes it sucked yes everybody's watching but stop making excuses like this entire book feels like an excuse he's not owning up he's not going yeah my bad i'm sorry i screwed up it was tough this is my apology this is my reasoning whatever it just feels like a continuous line of excuses going for me my mother died it was very difficult i don't care like, yes, it sucks, but everybody has stuff that sucks. There's a point where you put on your big boy pants and you move on. <laughs> Harry's lawyers. All allegedly. Like, <laughs> like, stop making excuses and just go, yes, this happened. Yes, I did not handle it well. I learned from it, and now we're moving on. Yeah. Like I said, I don't, I don't inherently disagree with you, <laughs> but at the same time... His mommy died. It, no, it's not just that, though. It's his upbringing. And, like, your grandma is the queen. And there are expectations. And when you feel like you're constantly not living up to those expectations or the world is just waiting for you to screw up, that affects a person. Yes, but William's mother also died. Yeah. William has even more expectations. Also true. But different people handle things differently. Yes, but you don't see William cry. But we have not... Although, if he writes the book called Air, I'm there for it. That's what I said. We have not read the book Air. <laughs> we don't know what sorts of things Willie would say. That's the no, other thing. That's like, the other thing. Willie, keeps like... Mm. calling him... Is that, like... So, I've been listening to the audiobook. Mm-hmm. Uh, you were reading. I was reading, yeah. So, does he actually say Willie and Mommy and Pa in yeah. the book? It's not just what he... Yeah, it's as cringy as you think. Okay. Yeah. And I was like, that's, like... He talks about them very familiarly. <laughs> Is that a word? Like, like I, I get the sense that there's still a lot of tension between the brothers. Yes. From what I hear in the media. <laughs> but to refer to him as Willie, which seems like a childhood nickname, seems very, like, there's a fondness to it that I wouldn't expect. Yeah. I think is what I... That's the thing that got me with all this is, A, William's in it very little, which I don't know if it was by intent or by uh, palace editing. Because <laughs> I'm fairly certain at some point, somebody at the palace got a copy of this and went, you cannot put that in there. Do you think? Oh, I'm I'm sure of it. Really? Yeah. Huh. And they let all this stuff go from the North Pole? <laughs> like, they would <laughs> let him leave that in? Yeah. Well. It's the spare talking about his own personal medical problems versus disparaging the heir. Mm, and or undermining his presumed eventual authority talking about the firm is that what they call it the firm exactly yeah i guess that's like, true i i would be shocked if there hasn't been at least some level of editing done by palace like we'd be blown away by that actually yeah i i also like that or harry left it out intentionally going yeah this is gonna get cut anyway so i'm not putting it in to begin with that or he was like this is a book about me it's yeah, time it's for me. me it's all about me it's time for me to be in the spotlight exactly i'm tired of being this spare- like the first, like, I would say a good quarter of the book, he a lot referred to himself as the spare. Mm-hmm. A lot, oh. a lot. Excessively so. Honestly, to the point where like, we're going, A, you don't have to put the spare in every five seconds. I'm pretty dang sure that you weren't referred to as the spare your entire life rather than, hey, Harry, stop it, you little twerp. <laughs> <laughs> 
and b stop capitalizing spare it started to tick me off well yeah like obviously you sound petty and bitter and jealous Mm -hmm. and the fact that you titled your book spare it's just a big like yeah i mean don't get me wrong i i don't love the way he's gone about living his life since he married Meghan markle it's one of those things where i go if you want a quieter life that's and you want to kind of just step back from royal stuff sure fine yeah. i've got zero problem with that it is your life there is a point where you have to lay some ground rules and go you're my family and i love you but i'm not dealing with this anymore yeah but there's a- also the whole we want to live a quiet life here's our merch here's our books mm-hmm. here's our interviews with oprah yeah. we would like to still trade on the family name that you claim to hate so much yeah so first there was the oprah interview then there was the netflix series and then now this book and the podcast and all of these things and it's like okay i would feel better about it if you would just step back and like live your life you're trading on the family name mm-hmm. that you say that you despise that you hate that you disagree with you've been treated so poorly and you've been treated so poorly but you have no problem using them for a cash grab that's my issue with yeah it. if you yeah. want to live your life quietly i by all means go for it if you want to start you know businesses and you know whatever else fine Mm -hmm. but you're continuing to make money off of the thing that you so vehemently despise no that part i do not i do not care for and i what diana would do (laughs) (laughs) i don't know like we haven't gotten into the megan years yet no thankfully um but sometimes i wonder how much of what's happened in recent years is because of Megan. I feel like there was a shift when it came to Megan. And Megan mm-hmm. might be perfectly lovely. She might be perfectly fine. I don't know. I don't care. Not my life, not my circus, not my monkeys. Mm-hmm. But it does feel like there was a drastic shift of Harry in the military, Harry doing charity work, Harry going like Africa is very important to him. Yep. To America. <laughs> 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 Which doesn't sound fair. Um, but like as the book stands right now. I feel like if Harry was actually going to take a step back from royal life at the point in the book that we are now, which is just after the second tour. Yes. Yeah. I feel like he would be in Africa. He keeps going to Africa. He keeps referring to Africa as home. Mm -hmm. He keeps referring to Africa as his happy place. Mm -hmm. Currently, where he is in the book, or in his life in the book, if he was going to just take a step back, it seems like it'd be in that direction. Yeah. But he also talks at least a few times about how he wants badly to be married and be a father and you just made a face (laughs) he does talk about that (laughs) yes but i don't know if that was actual feelings at the time or just you know emphasize or setting things up for later in the book Mm. yeah i mean i I do think he wants to be a father i I have no doubt about that he's always seemed like one of those people that's just good with kids you see uh him with kids and he's the one with you know kids hanging off each arm and three legs yeah like like he's always seemed very like the word i'm looking for kindergarten teacher (laughs) no but he seemed like the friendlier more approachable like down to earth royal Mm -hmm. in the family right like he's sort of the one you think you could be a a pal with yeah you know and i don't know he's the go for a pint type yeah but he just lately i don't know that's probably influenced by things i've read online too though about Meghan markle and i try to stay away from it because honestly i don't care yeah. Like, I'm not a mar- monarchist in any way, shape, or form. I think, yes, the royal uh, family serves its purpose, but that it is primarily ceremonial and or tourism-based. Yeah. I do find it somewhat hilarious that the current Prime Minister of the UK, to be fair, we're filming this or recording this in February, so he might not be the Prime Minister of the UK at the time of release. <laughs> Entirely possible. <laughs> he is, like, twice as rich as the king. Really? Yeah, Rishi Sumac is like <laughs> twice as wealthy as Charles, which just amuses the heck out of me. He actually made a statement in defense of this book and the royal family that I read online earlier. He likes to keep his job. <laughs> They've gone through like three prime ministers oh, less I know. than a year, so I know. he wants to keep his job. But um, I'm, I would say I'm a quasi monarchist. Like I find the royal family fascinating, and when i was in elementary school our school library had a book about charles and diana's wedding that i took out repeatedly because mm-hmm. i just love looking at the pictures the raisin dress <laughs> there was one, her, her wedding dress was once described to me as she looks like a marshmallow with a raisin for a head <laughs> <laughs> so that's just in my head now. Uh, but like as a, a six-year-old like 
it's impressive like the, yeah just the sheer pageantry of it and it, it's like a real life princess right like mm-hmm. so i think that's sort of i'm not like hardcore like a lot of people but i find them interesting more from like a uh, monkeys in a zoo point of view <laughs> <laughs> see it's no wonder this guy is messed up more along the lines of hmm, interesting behavior from that particular primate <laughs> rather than oh what kind of scandal we have to now because i don't care half of it is overblown and mm. straight up bs anyway yeah all of the palace insiders are full of it mm-hmm. nobody that's actually a palace insider would actually still have a job if they said anything and i think 95 percent of it is just straight up hype there's no no substance to it yeah. so i don't pay attention to it because it's just not worth it unless it actually <laughs> comes from a reputable source which is pretty much never right but like i honestly think that this is harry's truth according to harry it's harry's truth according Whether to harry it's... i don't can necessarily consider this a reputable source either that's the thing <laughs> It's very yeah. much from his point of view how he mm-hmm. felt. It is ruled by emotion, not by fact. Mm-hmm. And yes, that is your truth. But your truth isn't necessarily the actual facts of the event. Mm-hmm. You weren't the kid in the hole with firecrackers thrown at him. That, that, that story really bothered you, hey? It does. <laughs> I'm sorry, if that was my kid, you would be disciplined so quick. It's says, pyrotechnics. Says the woman with no kids. I'm all for kids throwing firecrackers at each other. In a healthy and fun environment where the one can run away from the other guy as fast as he wants. It becomes entirely different when it's in an enclosed space. <laughs> I know. Uh, I'm just bugging. I honestly, like, I, f- I feel so conflicted. Because I, I do feel sorry for that boy who had to grow up with the whole world watching him and judging him. And mm-hmm. being what he felt was second best all the time. Like, I feel, I feel sympathy for that boy. I do. Yeah. As an adult... As an adult, like, I don't have sympathy for him. I mean, there is a, a certain time, like you say, where you grow up and learn to deal with it. But if you've never been taught how to deal with it, if the party line has always been, well, the media is going to say what they're going to say, we're just going to ignore it, we're not going to respond, we're not going to deal... Like, If it's mm-hmm. always like we're not going to deal with it, you don't learn how to deal with things properly. I feel like his uh, relationship with Camilla is uh, interesting. <laughs> I don't know that he loves her. I also found it interesting that, was it Dodi Alfaya? That was his name, right? Mm-hmm. He never refers to him by name. Nope. He's always mummy's boyfriend. Yep. He doesn't have a name. He's just mummy's boyfriend, which I thought was very interesting. I always feel bad for that guy because he totally got the short end of the stick. Oh, Diana's dead. Everybody mourn. Oh, and that guy. And that guy. Well, I mean, nobody, most of the world wouldn't have known who he was if it wasn't for Diana anyways. Yeah. So... But I, it, it's like everything where you feel bad for the people that are just forgotten. Yeah. Of course, if it wasn't for Diana, he might still be alive also. Exactly. But that's not... It's that's not neither here nor there. And it's not her fault. No. No, at like, no point is it her fault. Surely she didn't want the paparazzi chasing her. No. So... Did she make some bad decisions? Yes. Did... It, was it something that she deserved to die for? No. No. It's like anything. Either you win some, you lose some. And... Over the course of your life, you hope that you win more than you lose. Mm-hmm. And she just lost before those tables could be turned. Yeah. But no. He... I feel like he's very cagey about anything regarding Will and Kate. Just very... He's very... He tiptoes. He tiptoes like hell around the Will and Kate situation. Like, he, he goes into it a little bit about Eaton and whatnot and when he and Will were there at the same time. Mm-hmm. And... He mentions Kate and how he likes her and all that stuff. But he's very careful not to make too many disparaging comments about Will. And also very, very careful not to make too many complimentary comments about Will. He, he seems to be very much towing that line of hinting that him and Will don't get along and that he doesn't like him. But also putting in enough positive things to go, oh yeah, no, yeah, no, we're fine, we're fine. I Like... Uh, you can't actually get a, any kind of sense as to what their relationship's like. No, you can't. In the first half of the book. <laughs> yeah. To be fair. Uh, I know that there's a fight scene coming <laughs> in the second half, <laughs> uh, which I've heard about a few times from different places. I. It's it, one of those things where I'm going, sure, it, it sucked that Will didn't pal around with you at Eden, 
but I'm sorry. I'm an older sibling. I went to the same school as my younger siblings. You bet your I didn't pal around with them. I don't think that's any kind of, oh, I'm the spare. I'm not worth anything more. So much as you're the little brother. Like, well, <sighs> right. But in a normal circumstance, yeah, you're the little brother. That's what's going to happen. I'm sorry. But, a little brother's still a little brother and a big brother's still a big brother. I don't care how famous you are. That Yeah, but when you're constantly being referred to as the spare. Is it constant, though? I don't know. Or is it? According to him. An imagined slight like off he, one or two comments. He talks about, uh, like, how Charles and, and Will aren't allowed to fly on the same plane. Yeah. Yeah, because and if, Will and Kate have now thoroughly busted that to pieces because they fly on the same flight as their kids all the time. But... But then he says, nobody cares where the spare flies. You know, like, yeah, okay, you sound jealous and a little bitter. Yeah, because there's a point where we're going, do we have to arrange every single person in the royal family on their private jet in case one goes down? Well, no, but if you are constantly, if you perceive yourself to be constantly referred to as second best or second whatever, not as good, you don't measure up, you're never going to be this. Like, if you... Maybe already not a confident person. And then the world is telling you all the time, you're the spare, you don't matter, you're never going to be king, this yada, 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 you're second best, you're number two, whatever. That has to affect you. Yeah, but again, there's a point where you decide. You make the choice. You go, I don't care what they think, I'm going to do what I want and live my life my way. And that might be the whole moving to America with your wife thing. And maybe that happens in the second half of the book. But you can also see how he is becoming more aware he is. of He's people. He's definitely growing up. And so whether he inherently admits, I've screwed up, I shouldn't have done this or I shouldn't have done that, you can see that he has a genuine concern for people. Mm-hmm. And, like, he has done a lot with veterans, specifically. I and think after joining the military, AIDS. he's grown as a person. Yep. But even before that, he was still, like, wanting to work with AIDS kids and, and things in Africa. Mm-hmm. Because that's what his mom, that was one of her causes. He he has that in him. Like, he, he cares. Like, he appears to care for other people. He wants to do good in the world. I'm not world. saying he doesn't care about people. No, but, like... I'm just saying there seems to be a disconnect between him caring about people and him realizing that his actions can hurt people. So maybe that's just not part of the story that he's telling. <laughs> I <laughs> that was the part the palace removed. <laughs> <laughs> that's the part he neglected to put in the book. Yeah. Like, again, no, it could I, just be the way that it's written and the way that I'm interpreting, because everybody will see something else in the book depending on personal experiences and that kind of thing. And the history, like I said, I stay out of royal stuff pretty mm-hmm. much. I mean, I thought Liz was pretty darn cool. Do I agree with everything she did? No. But, I mean, she took Saudi Arabia's president, prime minister, king, whatever they have, around by Moral Castle grounds. She took him on a ride in her Jeep because in Saudi Arabia, women aren't allowed to drive. (laughs) So she did it just kind of a... Look what I can do. Which, I mean, good on you, Liz. But I don't know. I know. I Currently, the first half of the book, it's getting better. I have a feeling it's going to devolve again in the second half. (laughs) He is finally taking some kind of responsibility and sort of actually becoming a little bit more self-aware. But I also, I I just want you to acknowledge that growing up the way that he grew up. Yes, it's difficult. And yes, that's going to affect him. I don't deny that. But I'm just saying that despite growing up that way, there's a point where you have to stop using that as an excuse for the way you are now. When that's all you've ever known, how are you supposed to change if nobody tells you? Think about the people in his life who are giving him advice. They are paid to give him that advice. What kind of advice is he getting from those people? I don't know. I have a feeling Marco's a pretty straight shooter. Well, <laughs> he seemed like the type to go, Harry, you're being a Stop it. Well, that may be. But, like, you know, when everybody around you is paid to tell you or is saying... If like you're they, surrounded by yes men, how are you ever supposed to know that? <laughs> no, you shouldn't. And when everybody, every person you meet is enamored with you because of who you are... Mm-hmm. And your name and your title and your family. Yes, Nobody's but at the gonna... same time, he's also saying that I was always a spare. I was always thought less of. I was always, you know, I'm the extra. I'm the Harry. Why aren't you doing better? So at, at some point, he's received some kind of criticism. So at some point, everybody wasn't enamored with him. We could debate this with days. I know. I know. <laughs> and and I don't disagree with you, but I, I think perhaps you're being just a little bit harsh. Well, that is me. Put it this way. 
I think given his platform, he could do a hell of a lot of good. Mm -hmm. And for a while there he was. I just don't think he is anymore. And that could be as a result of his marriage. There was a turning point in his life, whether that be Megan, whether that just be being fed up with the royal family and life in general, mm -hmm. whether that be exiting from the military. We are not at that half of the book yet. Yeah. But I, whether, like, we see it as a turning point because we see, but can he see that? Will he admit that in his book, right? Like, that's probably not something he's going to say, oh, I, this happened and then I stopped doing this or probably I stopped caring. Not, like, no. he's not going to, even if he's aware of it, he's not going to admit to that. No. I, I know I'm not going to change your mind. No, you're not. You're going to hate him. You're going to hate this book. And I I don't hate him. I just, it's like with anything where I go, yes, you're in public scrutiny. Yes, that is not easy. But you also have a platform to actually make a difference. You, as one person, yeah, could actually make a measurable difference mm -hmm. in the world. Like I say, mm -hmm. I don't disagree with a lot of what you're saying. But I... I want you to acknowledge my side and say, I don't disagree with what you're saying either. I don't disagree with what you're saying either. Happy? <laughs> no, because you don't mean it. <laughs> I agree his life has not been easy. I agree that his mom dying and having the entire world watch as he grieves as a 12-year-old boy is difficult. Yes, he's been raised in that scrutiny. Yes, that scrutiny has to a point only gotten worse as he's grown up, but he also hasn't helped matters. His actions have not been one of someone who is conscious as to what their smallest actions could end up, what, what kind of domino effect they could have. He's not doing himself any favors. No. I... We're just at that point now. I, I'm not even... I'm, yeah. <laughs> I think we're at an impasse. We really are. I feel like we're just circling. No, we're Same just going around and around I and know. around. It's so crazy. <laughs> what do you think of the actual book, like the writing and, you know, pacing and that kind of thing? Um, I thought that it's funny because there's a lot of chapters. Each part in the book starts with chapter one, right? Mm -hmm. Mine doesn't do that. It just continues on. Oh, so okay. that's why I'm on like, I don't know what. what We're in chapter be. 56 of part two. So uh, I found it funny because some of the chapters were very long or felt very long and others were like very, very short. Yeah. And I felt like some of them ended very abruptly. Like, all of a sudden, droop, Well, that's the thing. Chapter. And like, I'm like, what happened? There was a lot of cutscene, fade to black. Okay, we're moving on. The palace yeah. cut that part. <laughs> referring to the palace cutting things. I have no idea if they did. You have... I, I honestly don't know if the palace had any say in this book. I would be shocked if they didn't. Anyway. There's um, 114 chapters that we've read so far. Okay. Yeah. So, um... Some of those chapters are, like, a page and a half long. It's... I feel like, and we talked about this before, that the audiobook is a, a little bit of a, an entity of, unto itself and, mm -hmm. like, has garnered popularity on its own aside from the actual written book. Yeah, it's rare that an audiobook is just as popular as the written book mm -hmm. in terms of, like, when I checked the other day on the ebook copy, it was, like, 327 holds. And that was almost as many as the actual book copy mm -hmm. had on it. I think the other one had, like, 302 or something like that. Yeah, so... Um, it's interesting to listen to it because you can like sometimes he'll kind of chuckle or there's a part where they had like a tribute concert for their mom mm -hmm. like was it 10 years after she died I think it was 10th anniversary and so they had this concert and Elton John was performing and they wanted him to sing um, Candle in the Wind yeah but he chose a different song so then he starts singing that song he's not a great singer but I was like, okay, so, like, it's different. See, that's where I think the disconnect is happening here with our conversation. Because I'm reading what's written as fact and presented as... What's written as fact and presented as a... This is how it happens. This is kind of a... I have it in black and white. You have the personality. Mm -hmm. And see, yeah. that's where I think our disconnect is happening. Maybe. Because I'm reading it as fact with no tone, no inflection, just... This is how it was written. Mm -hmm. And there's no added context added what's written right. there is what's written there you're getting the chuckles the giggles the <laughs> <laughs> the maniacal laughing there's no maniacal laughing but like no, there is here but you get more tone and exactly and feeling from you can infer 
quite a lot from just his tone and the way he's saying something or the way he's, you know, pronouncing mummy or willy or whatever. Whereas I'm not getting any of that. That's true. So I think that's probably where half of our disconnect is happening here. But also, you said it yourself, you're reading it black and white, like, Mm -hmm. this is the truth, this is fact, whatever. I think you also have to keep in mind, this is the truth according to Harry. Oh, I'm very much keeping that in mind. There's been quite a few times where I'm reading this and going, "Mm, I'd like to hear the other side of that particular one. (laughs) That's why I think a book called The Hair. 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 (laughs) The hair, or lack (laughs) thereof. No hair. (laughs) No, a book called Air would be very appropriate right now. Yeah. With a similar cover. Oh, I want the exact same cover, but with Willie instead of Harry. Yeah. Yeah, so, okay, maybe that does make a difference. And like I said, I I have rolled my eyes more times than I can count <laughs> while listening to this book. I honestly have, because I'm like, come on, man. There's seriously. a lot of stuff in here where I'm just going, mm-hmm, sure. Really? And also, okay. <laughs> did you need to put that in this book? Like, The Frostbite, I won't go into details. You can read it. You've possibly heard about it already online. But, like, seriously, he devotes how many, like, a chapter to, yeah, the, and to the frostbite? I'll be honest, I kind of feel like that was deliberately added, so to take away from the royal wedding. <laughs> <gasps> My brother's getting married, but I'm dealing with this really bad frostbite. Exactly. Feel sorry for me. Like, if anybody needs any context, um, he, he had uh, frostbite on a rather sensitive region of his anatomy. <laughs> and we'll leave it at that, because mm-hmm. honestly... The, the terms that he uses are now forever etched in my brain, and I will not be able to think about Harry without thinking about that particular term. I am going and to... And King Her- um, Henry. Actually, King Henry VIII. I'm going to try and not think about those particular aspects of his anatomy. Preferably, preferably. But not the aspects of the anatomy, just that word. That word <laughs> is forever linked with Harry in my brain now. But also, did he not talk about um, when it was Will's wedding, how... Like, he was he was happy for them and whatever. But that also, it felt like kind of a loss. Mm-hmm. And I just... Well, he also said the same thing at um, Charlie Char- and Camilla's. Charlie and Camilla. <laughs> and I just... You know, he was talking about that, and I thought, that's really true. He really kind of hit the nail on the head, because I feel like I've been to a lot of weddings, mm-hmm. and, like, it's happy. It's a, a happy occasion. You're happy for the couple. But I always feel at the a little... same time, you're kind of going, yeah, I've never seen you again. <laughs> I always do feel a little bit sad after a wedding because you know that your relationship is going to change, mm-hmm. right? And so it's just, like, I never have really put it into words or whatever, and I just thought that was very astute observation. Yeah, yeah, no, it definitely was. So, I mean, we sort of know how the second half of the book is going to play out because... Well, the media in the last five years. Yeah, <laughs> we've seen. We don't really know all the things that he will say. Although some Honestly, I'm more interested to hear what he says about his kids rather than about his wife. Do you think he'll talk about his kids much? I have a feeling he will. Okay. Just, I mean, judging by the amount of times he said, I want to be a father. But also because, I don't know. I saw somewhere online that said if you watched their documentary on Netflix, you've basically seen the mm-hmm. book. Or whatever. I'd kind of expect that. So I don't know. I haven't watched it yet. I feel sort of hesitant too because at a certain point it feels like they are kind of whining. Yeah. About about it. Like, oh, we've been treated so poorly. So we had to we had to get away. Okay, you're away now, so just stop talking about it. Like Well, are you doing anything constructive about it? Yeah. Like, are you encouraging anybody in the palace to take inclusion lessons? <laughs> no. Are you working on repairing those relationships are you trying to you know use your platform to combat racism either where you are or somewhere else yeah but like at us i think from megan especially i feel like there's just a clip i saw from the documentary where she was kind of making fun of how she had to bow to the queen or something you're marrying into the royal family you need to expect that and i was like you're kind of making a mockery of his family yeah and he did have kind of a look on his face that was like well, I'm kind of like, okay, even if you don't agree with the monarchy aspect, A, why are you marrying into monarchs if you don't agree with it? B, it's still his grandma. Yeah. You still treat her with respect. Exactly. I don't care if you think all her pomp and pageantry is ridiculous. You still treat her with respect. Yeah. Like, it's true. until she, you know, pokes you with a parasol and says, get out of my way, Megan. <laughs> the cold is coming through. <laughs> you <Example>. still... <laughs> it was my grandmother-in-law's 90th birthday a few weeks ago. 
we were at her party. I went to wish her a happy birthday. She looked at me like she had no idea who I was. I stood and talked with her for five minutes, did not understand a word she said, smiled and nodded throughout the whole conversation. And my oldest daughter said to my husband, wow, I could not understand great grandma at all, but mom, she understood everything she said. <laughs> and I was like, no, I didn't. <laughs> didn't understand I was a very word. good at faking it. <laughs> but like, that's the thing where there's an element of you still treat them with respect. Yeah. Regardless of if she's the queen or not, because she is your elder. She is your husband's grandmother. Mm -hmm. She's an important person in his life. If we know nothing else, we know that they had exactly a special relationship. Like, it, so, it's things like that where I'm going, I don't care if you think the bowing is silly. Yeah, just do That's it. That's just what you do. That's the life that you have chosen. Like, this is not, you know, this is not drastic. Yeah. This is nothing that is going to severely injure you mm -hmm. or leave a lasting scar yeah. having to bow to the queen I th like i think my issues are more with megan than with harry <laughs> to be <laughs> honest i don't know but i know very little about her she uh again a lot of my opinions come from things that i have read but from multiple sources and like there have been comments now like a lot of comments online about how okay you've had your say now like let it go yeah. or I think it was Helena Bonham Carter who said that we don't need to pay attention to Harry's memoir anymore. Like, it's had enough. It's had its 15 minutes of fame. Let's, yeah, let's move, move on, on from it. And I think people are kind of getting tired of the mm -hmm. the sob story. Although we haven't gotten into that part yet, so yeah. we should maybe. But, uh, yeah. I don't know. It's just one of those things where there's a point where I go, stop it. Yeah. Just stop. Focus on raising your kids better than what you were raised. Mm-hmm. And that's the thing I'll say for Will and Kate. I mean, neither of them exactly have the easiest time in the press. They're constantly in there, you know. Mm -hmm. Oh, she wore a dress again. Oh, the horror. Who cares? Most of us wear our clothes more than once. If you don't, well, I'd like to stand outside your dumpster and get your leavings, please. <laughs> your leavings. <laughs> Kidding me? Oh. I'd make a killing. <laughs> Just wash and resell that stuff. You are good to go. Could buy a, <laughs> a whole new wardrobe. Exactly. But, like... They have made an effort to raise their children themselves. And yes, of course, nannies and stuff like that are still employed and that kind of thing. There's the reality of it. Mm -hmm. But by all accounts purposes, they are doing a better job of raising their kids hands-on than their parents before them. Although they're not perfect either. No, nobody is. What parent can say they're perfect? <laughs> We've got another disconnect here. <laughs> I don't understand. Yeah. I think we hate this book. I think we hate this book. <laughs> That's the conclusion I'm coming to. Oh, goodness. I think we need to stop. We still oh. have to do some kind of outro to the next part. <sighs> Any thoughts for the next half of the book? Uh, he's going to marry Megan. It's hard to say about thoughts because it's a biography. We kind of know. We know. What's happened up to this point. I mean, we don't know harry's version of it no specifically but uh, or megan's or megan's Maybe. i am kind of curious to see if there's any kind like, of like megan's opinion in any of the second how, half but how much input do you think she had into this book i, I honestly wonder. don't know if it's like just harry's book and harry's view and everything or if megan starts to influence when it, it, blah, 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 if megan starts to influence it when she kind of yeah starts entering the picture but will we be able to tell that also how much what is her <laughs> influence and what no is no idea yeah he says megan is the most perfect person ever and has never done anything wrong in her life and should be awarded a sainthood then i'm pretty sure she's had some influence <laughs> maybe he actually believes that i certainly hope not because he needs to know life is not that it's not how it works out well he has grown up in a bit of a bubble quick somebody give me a pin <laughs> <laughs> yes yeah, I think the second half will be interesting. I think the second half is where a lot of the uh, scandal lies. Mm -hmm. Somebody, <laughs> one review, or I don't know if it was a review, but they were talking about that they thought the entire, like, sec part two of the book could have been cut. Basically, it's like Harry's boyhood years, Harry and Meghan, the military years, which mm -hmm. they thought was sort of... I don't know. I thought a lot of that was kind of interesting, actually. I found... Personally, but... Like, I found the first part of the book was very... Um, half remembered which yeah. is completely fair because pff, i don't remember what happened when i was a kid mm -hmm. um but the second half it definitely got a lot clearer a lot more detailed mm -hmm. a lot more um 
properly written anecdotes as opposed to I think maybe that could be what happened that's what I think there's something in the tabloids about it, and this is what I remember mm -hmm. so I think the second or the second part has already been a lot a lot more thought out a lot more complete yeah. mm -hmm. so I'm kind of curious to see how that translates into the, the third part mm -hmm. or the second half of the second part and the third part yeah um like I definitely liked part two what i've read of part two better mm -hmm. than part one personally well i think part two is really where he starts to come into his own mm -hmm. and i was sort of expecting like a lot of like very technical military like detail mm -hmm. things like the way that this person had talked about it was like it was military but it wasn't all military no not I by any means actually expecting the military part to be glossed over a lot more mm -hmm. a bit more like i went to war I did some stuff, and but we moved on. It was interesting to to hear about it and how he, like, signed up, and then they kind of kicked him out because it was mm -hmm. too much publicity, and, and they were under attack once, and they were specifically, or they, like, there was a threat on him, and, like, all of those things, learning how to fly the planes, and, like, I just thought that was all very interesting. I, th like, that's the thing I found interesting, because with the whole Harry going to the military thing, I didn't realize he was the FAC, forget, flight control something um fac whatever it was i don't know um i didn't realize he was that first before he was a pilot i mm -hmm. didn't realize that was his first tour so actually having like the chronology of the tours and um kind of just the processes that he went through i mean mm -hmm. two years to fly an apache helicopter to me on the one hand it's two years to fly an apache helicopter but on the same hand it's an apache helicopter should that take longer <laughs> <laughs> um i found that part quite interesting mm -hmm. how he kind of you know works on his training and that kind of stuff mm -hmm. so I think that needs to stay in the book. Yeah, I think it's an I important agree. part. Of I was not looking forward to part two, but I actually found it more interesting than part one. Yeah, definitely. So far. And, uh, yeah, because I, like, I don't, admittedly, don't know a lot about military things. I didn't grow up with that. Um, so, so, yeah, for me, it was just interesting to hear. And from his perspective, too, because, mm -hmm. like, how can you be inconspicuous going into the military? The whole world yeah. knows who you are, right? Of course they're going to put a hit out on you. Oh, yeah. Like, it's a little naive to think you can just join the army and go off to war yeah. without, like... It is on the one hand, but on the other hand, there is a surprising amount of... Like, we both somewhat pay attention to the monarchy. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of people out there that don't. And if you live in a country every day that has a queen in Britain, and, you know, it's just kind of commonplace... I know British people that don't have any clue who, you know, half the royal people are. So, yeah, there is sort of the conceivable notion that, you know, you're not as famous as you think you are. But that being said, it was, like, the military part of it is not, uh, how do I put it, exclusionary <laughs> in mm -hmm. terms of terminology and yeah. the technical aspect of it. Oftentimes, yeah. as soon as it turns veers down the military alley, it's all... Acronyms in this, of you know, mm -hmm. serial numbers of that, and he doesn't use very, a lot of jargon. Yeah, exactly. It it's, turns very jargony. It's not mm -hmm. like it's it's kept quite approachable, and I think that was good. Yeah, I agree. And I, also, you can see him start to look outside of himself in those mm -hmm. um, in that part as well. And like, well, what do I have to complain about? You know, this guy's missing a leg. Exactly. And he's going to the North Pole. I'm just a little bit cold. Yeah. You know, like I still have both my limbs and, you know, things like that. So you can kind of start to see a shift in how he thinks about himself and the, himself in the world mm -hmm. too, which, yeah. No, that's the thing. I'm, I'm looking forward to reading the third part uh, or the second half, whatever. I think it's mm -hmm. going to be quite different than the mm -hmm. first half of the second part. <laughs> Getting confusing. Um, but it's going to be interesting. Yep. So. Agreed. Let's hope we don't argue so much on the next half. Yeah. <laughs> Depending on how much of the arguing has been cut out. And we are back with part two of Spare by Prince Harry. So, I know that I have thoughts. <laughs> I'm positive that you also have thoughts. Yeah, I do. So, yeah. What did you think? I think the second half is easier to read than the first half. Yeah. Because the first half was a lot of, like, half-remembered kind of memories that just sort of dropped off into nothingness. Mm -hmm. Whereas the... Because, of course, the second half is more recent. Yes. It's a bit more complete. Yeah. That's true. So I did find it easier to actually 
read. That's true. I went through it a lot quicker mm-hmm. than I did the first half. First sure. half, I kept checking to go, how far much? Oh, I've got so much left still. <laughs> and the second half, I checked, I think, about halfway through. And I'm like, oh, okay, there's a fair amount left. But that last half, especially, just kind of, whee, gone. Yeah. I wonder, too, though, if a lot of it is, like, we've seen it play out in the media mm-hmm. in real time. Current, like. Yeah, sort of. In I the not-so-distant past. So pay attention to it, but. Well, yeah. no, but, like, you're aware of what's going on, right? And so mm-hmm. then, in some ways, you can just sort of, like. Fill in the blanks. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, I. There's a lot. He's got a lot of negative feelings towards the press. And it, there are parts where I feel like he's almost blaming all of his problems on the press. Yes, there's which, a point where I'm kind of going, it's not all their fault. No, but I also feel conflicted. And I feel this way a lot with famous people. Because as a famous person, you have to expect a certain amount of that mm-hmm. in your life. And whether it's right or wrong, it comes with the territory. It's not a new thing. Famous people should be aware no. of that when they get into it. If you think you're going to be famous and not have the press bugging you, I don't know what planet you're living on because that just doesn't happen. Right. But Harry was born into it. And so he doesn't really have a choice. Right? Like, he he can't, like, he can't just go off somewhere and be nobody because everybody knows who he is. Yes. And he didn't choose that life. He also hasn't helped himself. No, I'm not... Like, I'm, I'm sorry... You dressed up in a Nazi uniform. Yes. Yes. You, if you honestly thought that that wasn't going to be a thing, like... Right, okay. He, he seems to have a, a lack of awareness about what will cause a scandal and no <laughs> barometer, really, to judge that. Well, I don't know. And, like... But I feel like, for, for Megan, it was a choice, right? Like... Mm-hmm. And so I struggle with, like... She knew that going in, that he was a prince, right? See, that's the problem I have with Megan. She seems to have not done one iota of research. If I'm mar- marrying into the royal family, I'm looking into what that entails to make sure that I know what I'm getting into. Okay, and that's what he said, that she was like, oh, she never Googled us or anything. But does he honestly believe that? Did she really not Google them? Like, seriously? Like, I think she she probably Googled them, but put it this way. If I'm Googling the royal family, I am looking to see who people are, you know, what do they do? <laughs> right, but she claimed to not what even... What is your actual amount of wealth that you have? She claimed to not even know who Prince Andrew was. I know. Which I... See, that's the thing where in the second half, I'm reading it and I'm going, he paints Megan like she is some infallible, angelic creature who's never done anything wrong in her life. Mm-hmm. Now, I'm not agreeing with the press because whew, they have made her out to be like the devil himself, mm-hmm. which she is clearly not. No. But she is also definitely not this infallible creature that Mm-mm. he thinks she is. No. Like, she's human. And granted, I know he doesn't want to give, uh, I don't want <laughs> to say he doesn't want to give the press anything more to work with when it comes to Megan. Mm-hmm. And that may be why he's painted her as, you know, every day short of having wings. Yes. But... It's also, I don't know, as I was reading this, the thing that kept coming back to me was, he's just emotionally immature. Yeah. Like, he's very, he fluctuates so much. Yes. But also, look at his dad, like, the way that he talks about his dad. Mm -hmm. His dad is the same way. Yeah. And the games that they play and the pettiness, according to him, whether this is true or not, like... Like, his dad seems like a jealous, petty man Mm -hmm. who, don't you dare steal my spotlight because I'm the Prince of Wales. Oh, now I'm the king. I honestly wonder how much of that is Charlie and how much of that is Camilla. See, that's the thing, right? (laughs) And they were talking about how, like, leaks to the press about things that they Mm -hmm. had only talked about with Charles and Camilla. And so, but, like, like, he portrayed his dad as being jealous of his sons when they got more media attention than he did. Yeah. And so, like... But at the same time, if you look at the media attention Charles has gotten, especially in the wake of the whole Diana incident, it's been very negative up until about the last, you know, decade or so. Right. So, while Charles is jealous of media attention, according to this, it's also one of those things where I'm going, you've had media attention, and it's been brutal. Mm -hmm. That's true. 
But like, I, it's very. He contradicts himself quite a bit. Yeah. Like, at one point, he was talking about he had done a, a, a speech or a presentation or whatever, and he came off stage and he was like soaking wet with sweat and like verge of a panic attack, and he was criticizing William because William just went, "Oh, Harry, you're soaked," and kind of laughed it off. Mm-hmm. And, like, how dare he not take my mental problems seriously? But then, like, three pages later, he's talking about going to therapy and how he had done it because Willie had really encouraged it and, you know, was kind of the the thing that actually pushed him towards actually taking therapy seriously. Mm -hmm. So, on the one hand, he's going, how dare you not take it seriously? On the other hand, he's going, well, thank you for taking it seriously and actually pushing me to do it better. Like, yeah, I mean, he kind of contradicts himself constantly in that kind of way. Press was pretty awful to them. And I'm like, well, do I feel sympathy for them? I don't... Him more so than her. To a point, like, I feel bad for her because a lot of it was racism. Yeah. Like, it's, you married somebody who wasn't white, how dare you? Yeah. Which is not fair in any way, shape, or form. No. And I feel bad for her in regards to that. Yeah. In regards to a lot of the other stuff, she didn't do herself any favors. No. Because she came in with, if not very little knowledge of the royal family, very, very little knowledge of how, what your expectations are. Yeah. Like, your expectations joining the royal family are basically that you are discreet, that you are, you know, a, you know, kind person who avoids scandal Mm -hmm. and, you know... Demure. Demure, yeah. And while they're not expecting you to be a lapdog, per se, like Diana Mm -hmm. did pretty fine you know still supporting her causes still using her platform for good not that she didn't have her own problems um like it it seemed like megan just thought that she was essentially marrying a rich person as opposed to actually royalty and boy there's a difference yeah and he should have warned her Mm -hmm. and i just like if you look at william and kate they dated for what like years 10 years or something like yeah. that and there is still a point at which kate broke up with him because she wasn't entirely sure if she wanted to take on mm-hmm. the royal family yeah she and also had the nickname of weighty katie yeah <laughs> which i thought was kind of horrible well like you don't have to get married when you're like three it's fine yeah exactly like, past the point of arranged marriages at birth yes but like compared to that mm-hmm. megan and harry were very quick Yes, yes, they were. And, again, I have no idea how much the palace prepared them for anything, if there were any kind of lessons or expectations lined up yeah. for them or whatever. I have a feeling the palace would tell an entirely different story than Harry would on that regard. Mm-hmm. But she didn't do herself any favors. No. Like, and, I mean, when he said that she did, hadn't Googled them, I was like, do you really do you really believe that? Like, she's an actress. Yeah. You know, like, is she just playing at the fact that, you know, like, I almost feel like she knew more than she let on. Personally, I'm not her biggest fan. No, me neither. Like, I, I've seen a couple of interviews with her, and she just comes off as so disingenuous. Yeah. And to a point, I'm going, I don't care if you're a horrible person, if you're doing good things. Mm-hmm. If you're helping organizations and, you know, bringing attention to, you know, AIDS crisis and, you know, landmines and blah, 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 blah. I don't care what you do in your personal life, providing you're not hurting anybody there either. But with this kind of thing, it's honestly one of those things where I'm going, you should have been prepared. Yeah. You should have taken that on yourself. Like, if I was marrying a prince, you bet your butt I'd be doing my research and making sure and double and triple checking Mm -hmm. what my expectations were what my limitations were before i actually said yes yep because it always sounds like a fairy tale and then you actually get to reality where it's like no you gotta walk behind a bunch of horses for five hours waving at people (laughs) like (laughs) i don't think that's quite how it goes but sure but like yeah i want to know what i'm getting into and i honestly don't think she looked into that no I don't think she was as... Like, I had no idea who royalty were. Oh, she knew. Like, she had to I know. don't th- buy for one second, especially given the fact that she popped to London quite often. Yeah. That she had no idea. Yeah, like, she had a place there that she stayed at. Mm-hmm. She had to. Enough that they kept her stuff for her. Yeah. 
Like, no, she knew more than she let on. I am positive of that. I don't think she knows what it means to be a member of the royal family, but I also don't think she's as innocent as she thinks she is. No. And I feel like, to me, there was a certain desperation on his part to yes. marry and have children. Like, yes. a lot. He, and so... I think, hit that bachelor stage where he's going, everybody else around me is getting married and having kids. Mm. And I think he re- he legitimately wants kids. Oh, yeah. Like, he's... He, He's a kid person. He wanted that family life. But it also kind of feels a little bit like he... Like, the way he described, like, I saw her picture and, you know, fell in love. Yes. And, you know, who is going? this darling creature? I must know her. <laughs> exactly. Oh, like, no. that's the stuff of fairy tales, That's really. the stuff of fairy tales, and I just go... I can understand that a little bit more if you actually met her in person. Yeah. But you saw a picture. Yeah. Like... Sure, she's pretty. Is she that pretty? Mm. I don't think I've ever seen a picture of anybody and went, oh, my love! <laughs> <laughs> and wow! No. Woo, wow! It's what brings us together today. <laughs> and within a wink, me. The dream within a dream. <laughs> but I don't know. I have a hard time buying that that. I mean, you could look at a picture and say, oh, yeah, that person is, like, good-looking or hot mm. or whatever. But to know, like, I don't know. Like, the way he describes it, it wasn't just a case of, I looked at her, I liked the way she looked. Meh, it'd be fun, you know, yeah. meet her and see how it goes. It was described as a bit more of, like, instant connection. Yes. And I'm sorry, if I have an instant connection with a piece of paper? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah, I I don't know. Like, I, I think that this is the truth according to harry very much so i question how much of the truth is actually the truth for pretty much every single person that's in this book other than harry i want to talk to them and get their side of it honestly that's why i really want william to write a book called air Mm -hmm. with his side of the story like i i would love (laughs) i just i don't like i would love to know yeah really what he what he has to say and like they have been pretty quiet Mm mm-hmm in the royal family about their reaction to this book there is a point where i feel like the royal family is just kind of going ah harry's gonna harry (laughs) yeah like i i don't know and i just like like he doesn't help himself that's the thing no that's and like like it took till okay there was i think a year or two before they left the royal family or something like that he's talking about Somebody mentioned to him, like, why don't you get a lawyer? And it just didn't occur to him that that wasn't actually an option. Yeah. And I'm going, what are you, an idiot? <laughs> well, when you grow up in a family where everything's taken care of, of for yeah, you, but if like... you keep complaining over and over and over and over again that the palace lawyers aren't doing anything, yeah. my second thought would be, okay, I'll get my own. Yeah, that's true. Like, he hasn't helped himself in a lot of regards. That is true. Like, I mean, that being said... And with Megan not probably adequately preparing, did she deserve the level of vitriol that she got? No. no. Not in the slightest. Not in... No. Like, she... The way the press vilified her was not deserved. No. Not in any way, shape, or form. However, she chose that life. hmm And even if she didn't know anything about the royal family, once they started dating, she knew. Yep it became very clear after their relationship was in public what it was going to be like. Mm -hmm. And she chose that. Yeah. And so for me, I don't know. And like, I keep seeing all these things online. There was a South Park. (laughs) Oh my goodness. It was so funny. So they keep saying, leave us alone. We just want to live our lives. But they keep putting themselves out there. Mm -hmm. Right? So this South Park video was like one of the south park kids was at his house and the next door neighbors were like it's like i can't sleep the neighbors are yeah. causing a scene again and they had like fireworks going off and they were like leave us alone leave us alone <laughs> leave us. and it was like megan and harry right and they're on their front lawn and uh, and uh, like they're doing all these things to attract attention but mm-hmm. they were out there with their signs saying leave us alone leave us alone yep which is like i just laughed and then <laughs> i saw a meme with like William and Kate and their kids and they were like, Hey kids, should we go watch South Park again? <laughs> I just oh. burst out laughing. 
but like it's sort of true it you know is. like i leave me alone but also look at me look at me exactly you can't have it both ways like i can understand harry wanting to get his story out there saying like a lot of the things you've heard in the press about me aren't true or mm -hmm. you know whatever yeah. and trying to tell his side of the story and i get that but there is a point where you have to realize that you're just feeding them yeah and you have to be so so careful what you say because the slightest word will be misconstrued and then off they go with another mm -hmm. thing right like there is a point where we didn't believe a lot of stuff yeah I mean, people look at tabloids and go i don't believe 95 percent of that yeah and what you've done now is confirm some of it yeah like and like <laughs> he does uh, remind me a little bit of a hippie i will <laughs> say yeah I, I don't know why but i'm just getting hippie vibes off him because he smokes a lot of weed <laughs> yeah it could be probably a large point but like uh, there's also like i i believe as we discussed argued about whatever a lot of how his behavior is because of his circumstances mm -hmm. and he was never taught better he how can you know when you're not taught better right that's kind of what i think I mean, he could do the work himself, but... That's the thing. But, like, if you look at his... Look at... History tells us anything, right? Like, his dad, same thing. Mm -hmm. You know, but there's a lot of jealousy and pettiness and bitterness. And, like, he talks about going to therapy. And I'm like, have you really, like... There's a lot Put of... the work in yourself. There's a lot of things here that you still need to, work, to on. work on. Yes, okay, you are the second born son. You are the spare. Oh, I'm so glad like, there was less of that in the second half. Yes, the oh. first half was so, so much. In the second half, it came up a little bit, but not nearly as much. Oh, and I was, also was easier to read. <laughs> yes. But I'm like, okay, get over it. That's who you are. Yeah. Like, accept that. That's, like, so There's what? There's a point where you're responsible for the life that you've made. Exactly. And there is more freedom in being the spare. Yes. And, look and at, for as restrictive as your life is, look at Willie's. Look at the it's, expectations on his life. And he is basically stuck. Yeah. Right? Like, unless he chooses to abdicate. This is the life, like, this is the path that has been set out for him since birth. He has no choice. And Even though the family isn't an option for no, him. He can't, like, he has to put up or shut up, like, mm -hmm. basically. And so get over it like what would you rather have right like so to a certain extent by the end of the book i was like you guys are all so like all of them him william his dad charles like you're just kind of done with him by the end of the book yes because it's like you have been given like he talks about <clears throat> jet setting from africa to england to canada to antarctica mm -hmm. and while complaining about his life being so hard mm -hmm. i'm never going to go to antarctica yeah. i would love to go to antarctica yes. you have been given privilege beyond what majority of people can ever even imagine even people who have privilege like yes you are hounded by the press but guess what you can also use that to actually turn attention towards mm -hmm. things like global warming and you know the AIDS yes. crisis and things like that. You can use your platform for good, providing you don't do stupid things like dress up in a Nazi uniform. Like, okay, he made a mistake when he. Yes, was young. I know, but <laughs> it's still one of those things where a lot of the stuff he doesn't seem to. Like I said, he's very emotionally immature. He takes every every perceived slight mm -hmm. to heart. Yeah, and every like if you say I love you, he takes that as. I have your undying loyalty forever. Mm -hmm. If you say, hey, Harry, maybe let's not do that again, he takes that as a direct criticism of, you hate me. Yeah. Like, and yeah, that is a lot of how he was raised. The royal family is not healthy. That has been shown through mm -hmm. the centuries. But there's also a point where I'm going, you've got kids now. Yeah. You need to be better for them. Yeah. Don't put them back in in the cycle. But also, now you chose to step away but you're mad when you don't get the certain privileges that come along with exactly. that lifestyle, right? Like, I don't want to be in this lifestyle, but also, don't forget about me. I'm still here. Look I'd at me. I still like the private jet, please. Thank yes. you. Yes, and my security detail and yada, 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 yada. Mm -hmm. Like, I, the security part I kind of get. The security detail I understand, but at the same time, he also portrayed it like, oh, they're just going to leave, like, right now, mm -hmm. when the one security guy was actually like no we're leaving like march 31st it's yeah. like you've got some time yeah is it a lot of time no 
But when it comes to hiring a security contractor, you do have a bit of time, especially right. if you bought like a list of recommendations. Right. Like, but he also makes out like they don't have any money. Yes. And I'm like, you yeah. just said like two chapters ago that you inherited Diana's wealth when you hit thirty. Yeah, but I don't think he wanted to use that money. Is what it sounded like. Yeah. But like. But like, I'm sorry. I know you'd like to keep that money for like Archie or whatever, but security for Archie is also important. Yes. And like. A grown man being supported by his father. Mm-hmm. You know, I... That's <laughs> always one of those things where I'm going, I don't care who you are. <laughs> Just make your own way. Yeah. And also, yeah, like the privilege. Elton John's vacation home. Mm-hmm. Seriously. Staying at Courtney Cox's house, like... Yeah. Doing mushrooms at Courtney Cox's house. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, like, there's a lot of stuff like that where I'm going... And you wonder why they call you the party prince. Like, yeah, exactly. Well, he because does. Because you party. They're just reporting fact. Exactly. Like, and he was mad that they reported that he was doing, like, coke or something. And he was like, how could I they say did that? not. Oh, but I did. Actually, I did. <laughs> like, there's a lot of that stuff where it's yeah. like, Harry, you did do that. Yeah. You may not remember doing that because you were <laughs> currently on a purple planet surrounded by eat- people eaters. But, you know, <laughs> you I- did do that. When he was talking about when he was doing the mushrooms, I did laugh, though, because he yeah. was like, it was funny. It was really funny. I thought that part. But but it's one of those things, too, where it's like, there is a point where you bring it on yourself. Yeah. I mean, it's one of those things, too, where it's like, okay, you chose to leave the royal family because you want a privacy. Fine. Have you given any thought to how you're going to support yourself? Because yeah. right now, they're supporting themselves by putting themselves out there in every way possible and every mm-hmm. medium possible. And considering you wanted privacy, you didn't think that part through. I'm fairly certain, like, so they had the Oprah interview, which I'm sure they got paid for. Oh, guaranteed. And the Netflix series, Mm -hmm. and she had a podcast, Mm -hmm. and now this book. I'm fairly certain they've made some good money off of those things. They can probably live pretty comfortably. Yeah. I mean, there's going to be continued (laughs) costs like security and that kind of thing, but they're also not exactly... They're not living in a little, you know, three-bedroom condo. No. I honestly, like, if you want your privacy, then go away. <laughs> it's kind of how I feel. Yes. <laughs> I agree. Like, <laughs> But that being said, how is he supposed to make any money? Yeah. I mean, I was <laughs> talking to Chris about it. And I'm like, oh, they should do a TV show where it's just like, he has to actually do a regular job. <laughs> two standards everybody else would expect so like <laughs> if you're working in mcdonald's flipping burgers you have to do the job correctly mm-hmm. and actually live on that money yes for like you know two weeks or a month or whatever yes. the decision is like going and then he make just, some money that way and you'll redeem yourself a little bit because you're actually doing the proper job goes from job to job to job yeah trying out different basically jobs basically mike rose dirty jobs but with a royal <laughs> aspect i love that idea yeah, they should, Harry, if you're listening. I mean. <laughs> yes, I'm sure. I'm oh, sure, I'm he, sure is. he is. I'm sure he is. Could you imagine? <laughs> yeah, it'd be rather odd if he was. How wild would that be? <laughs> and then he would be mad. Look what they're saying about me. Uh, I'm not apologizing. I, I Grown men. <laughs> your life is what you made it. Do you have some hard knocks? Yeah. But you're not struggling for housing. You got no. food on the table. Your kids are going to have a perfectly good education. Your famous friends will bail you out every time. Your famous friends will bail you out. Is security something you need to consider? Yes. But you have the means to do so. Yeah. You don't have a stalker on minimum wage. Yeah. And somebody sending you death threats while you're barely making even. Yeah. Like, you have the means to hire security to make sure your family's safe. Yeah. Does it suck your, sucks that your mother died? Yeah. But it there's does. plenty of people whose mothers have died that have not had nearly the fortune that you've had. That's true. Although perhaps their mothers have not died in such a public way. No. And affected so many people. Not necessarily. Like, like could go Mother's Day all the time. Famous ones, not famous ones. Well, yes. I, uh, I will give him a little bit of grace for his br- upbringing and, Yeah, I don't you know, think his he was family. brought up well. No, absolutely not. Like, How can you be when you're shipped off to private school? I just... Well... Like, who's parenting I think those children? More the examples that he's had well, from his parents. Like, that too. Diana, while lovely in many ways, was not the healthiest role no. model. Charles sure as hell isn't. Camilla, we're not even going to get into. <laughs> and oh. the royal family for years has been. 
keep your mouth shut. Yeah. If you've got a problem, keep your mouth shut. And I assume that that also extends to personal problems. Yeah. But like, also, if you think about it, though, really, the royal family, while everybody knew them, they weren't in the media so much until Diana came along. Yeah. Like, they were largely... But the thing is, you got to remember, too, Diana came along right around the time when, to a point, the paparazzi came along. Yeah. Like, that kind of coincided yeah. quite a bit timing-wise. So, it's kind of unfortunate. But it's one of those things where... I know one of the things that's come up a fair amount since Charles has been king is he didn't behave the way that the queen did when she was first coronated. And we're going, yeah, because it was the 1950s and we didn't yeah. have a camera on her every five seconds. Exactly. So we and don't, know, we what, don't know what she would have done. So we don't have anything to compare it to. Yeah. And... He didn't grow up with that either, so he's not accustomed to, like, watch what you say. Assume that yeah. there's always a mic. Yeah. And that the mic is always on. Yeah. Like, there's a lot of that where it just... Yeah. It's very new still. Like, I feel like Elizabeth's coronation was probably one of the first televised royal events. Or was her wedding? Was her wedding televised? Uh, I'm trying to remember if her wedding was televised or not. Regardless, one of those two, like... Yeah, either way, that she was, was like the forefront of a lot of big stuff. The very beginning of that sort of thing. Now we can see everything, like... Yeah. You know, like, when she died, it was, like, a week's worth of stuff, right? And that was broadcast, like, constantly, yeah. nonstop. You could watch all of it. Mm-hmm. And I'm pretty sure it wasn't the same when her father died. No, no, you know, not like, at all. And so then you have a little more privacy there. Like, here, there's just... There's, there's nothing. There's no privacy. And, like, for the regular person, too, there's no privacy and no expectation of privacy to a point. Yeah. Like... And so, it's... So, yeah, his upbringing will have been different than his dad's, for sure, mm-hmm. in that regard as well, be dealing with the media and the press. And it's not... It's not so easy for them to just say, oh, we just ignore the press, right? Like, yeah. you just... To a certain extent, you just can't. You have to... The palace is very good at not responding but yeah. at some point i feel like you have to respond you well, need that's to that's the thing like he defend did point yourself. out at one point that everybody had like charles had sued the press at one point william had yeah. the queen had and he just hadn't yet yeah but they also discouraged him from doing that yeah which i also thought was like i a also bit want of the, the other side of that one well because he said they discouraged it and i want another reasoning why because they mm-hmm. may have had perfectly legitimate reasons yeah that's the thing like as much as I do feel for him a little bit and do feel conflicted because he is a product of his upbringing, mm-hmm. as we all are, he also, like, this is just one side yeah. of the story, right? Like, Harry's history as Harry remembers it. Yep. And... And that's the thing. Like, he he goes from, I love Willie, I hate Willie, I love Willie, I hate Willie. Yeah. He flip-flops so much. Yeah. And on the one hand, I'm going, your brothers. So you could say that about pretty much any sibling out there. Yep. Why would that change? Because you're royal. Yeah. And B, there are some things that Willie accordingly apparently did in this book where I'm going, he has his own family to protect. Yeah. He's got three kids. Mm -hmm. He went through the same media circus that you did. He is trying to do the best that he can. And I will say full credit to William McKay because it does seem like they're doing a good job with their kids. Yeah. And like, I mean, William has to think about the first, second, third, and fourth in line to the throne. Mm-hmm. Right? He has to... He has got far-reaching quons- consequences. Consequences? For a lo- like pretty much everything he does. Yeah. And there's a point where you're going, your wife and your kids are more important than your screw-up little brother. Yeah. And, and I- I'm sorry, screw-up little brother, but you've got quite the ego if you think you're more important than the wife and kids. Yeah. And he wasn't wrong when he said, don't you think you're moving a little fast? Oh, 100% like, right. <laughs> 110% you know, right. You maybe don't want to hear that. Thing is, Will has gone through it with Kate. Like, yeah. they dated for that long for a dang good reason. Mm-hmm. Like, she's been through that. Yeah. Is this something I want to sign up for? And Harry, all the rest of his previous girlfriends have been, I don't want to sign up for this crazy yeah. show. Yeah. Like. I know. There's a point where Megan has... I, and again not all of it not the racist parts not the like yeah. straight up vilifying but if you think you're marrying into the royal family and you're not gonna have a single issue with that you're yeah exactly. you've got some of harry's very very good weed <laughs> i mean look at his mom she was basically killed by the paparazzi mm-hmm. you know i mean not outright but she was being chased and they it caused, were a 
quite a considerable factor in it. Yeah, exactly. Like, you can't not think that that's not going to be your life. No. I don't... That was a convoluted sentence. Anyway. Yeah. I just, like... Honestly, my takeaway of this entire book is... Okay, Harry, you've explained how your life is kind of crap and how the paparazzi and the media always being on your tail has influenced a lot of your life. Yeah. Start backing away from the media now because otherwise you're going to do the same thing to your kids. And you're the scandalous one where you stepped away from the royal family. So as soon as your kids can give interviews, they're going to be asked about these things. Mm -hmm. So for the love of your kids, just stop. Yeah. Either approach it in a healthier way like just he's so busy thinking about what they've done to him Mm -hmm. that he hasn't seemed to transition yet to thinking about what could this do to my kids yeah and get off the weed man yeah yeah like like seriously consider joining a drug and alcohol therapy program because well honey you need it i mean he talked about when they had their first child and they were in the hospital yeah going to the laughing gas he I'm used sorry. all of her laughing gas i'm like if my husband had done that i would take that tank and beat him with it exactly like i dude. am pushing out a human being i just could not at the believe very least it. i'm breaking your hand while i'm doing it and the, you don't get get out of the pain the audacity of him to like oh i'm just gonna sample this laughing gas oh uh, i used it all up like if my idiot husband was giggling beside me while i'm pushing out a human being yeah. oh boy would i be mad that like that to me i was like oh my goodness dude that's just inconsiderate that oh that bothered me a lot actually no come just totally yeah come talk to me when you can push out a baby yeah like oh yeah he needs some help i mean he's trying i think or he was going to therapy and working on things but i think i don't think he's gotten to the point yet where he realizes that some of it is his fault Mm -hmm. and i don't know if he'll ever get to that point no he's been a little prince his entire life yeah well that's it is like and he's had a lot a lot of yes people yep that's also true and yeah okay the press is on you all the time but yeah like you said before look at your life look at the things that you have done you have a certain amount of privilege that yeah you are taking for granted completely and totally you've been to both poles dude yeah exactly and yeah no he's it's one of those things where i'm going i've read the book i now know more about harry and specific parts of his anatomy than i ever wanted to (laughs) has this changed my opinion on him no not really it's basically still the same i think he's spoiled do i think everything that happened to him is his fault no do i think a lot of stuff that's happened to him is his fault yes Mm -hmm. do i like megan no honestly this book has not changed my opinion of that in fact it has confirmed a few things that i already thought before where i'm going you did not do an iota of research before you joined and out of all of it i still feel the worst for his kids it did not make me more sympathetic towards him no really like because it just felt like a lot of whining a lot of whining ultimately and like i've heard people like talk about this book and oh this book is so great and oh poor harry like yes i've heard a lot of people who really love this book and like even just the writing is awful like i'm sorry i was having problems with the writing of it like yeah the short chapters where the short start to tell a story and then just drop off yeah i'm like ooh, did the censors redact that part yeah i mean was that the end or what what's happening here yeah and then you go into the next chapter and it's like completely different time Mm -hmm. and like no continuation which i mean chapters don't always have to continue but this was like an abrupt ending new topic yeah and i was like what is it's a little bit odd yeah and so yeah i i don't know and maybe maybe also i've seen a lot of negative media towards harry and megan and so that probably colored my opinion of this book also i did not go into it with an open mind not knowing anything because yeah although i do like specifically two people who i follow on instagram one person loved the book loves harry and megan one person hates them (laughs) Loves, so you have gotten both. Loves the royal family, this person. She went to England for the Jubilee, the Queen's 70th. Was it the 70th? Yeah. And uh, loves the Queen, loves William and Kate, hates Harry and Meghan. It's very interesting to hear her take. Interesting. Yep. That's... I think the royal family serves its purpose. Yeah. I think they are something where the majority of the role is ceremonial. Mm-hmm. 
as opposed to actually practical. And there's a point during this book where I'm going, how many houses do you need? Yeah. Like, seriously, this is getting out of hand because I can't keep track of them all. <laughs> I'm going, I can understand why the British taxpayers are a tad peeved. Yes. But they do also, because of the fact that they are the royal family, have the ability to, again, I know I keep harping on this, shine a light on issues. Mm -hmm. So I do see that they have value. It's not all mm -hmm. just like, oh, I'm going to wear a shiny crown. <laughs> and you, they do have the ability to do a lot of good. Yep. Do I think? that they use it to the full potential most definitely not i think no. there's certain members of the royal family that could have been tossed out on their rear <coughs> andrew not naming any names not naming any names nobody ever hears about edward no he's balding he is balding he looks uh, like a nice guy though he just seems to be like the brother that everybody forgets and he's kind of like yeah i'm cool though. and also the sister what's her name margaret yeah and uh, I always forget with Margaret was the sister or Anne was the sister of the queen and one's the daughter. Yeah. I so can never keep track of which one's which. The, the daughter of the queen, the sister to King King Charles. I will never get used to that. I just hear King Charles Cavalier, which is a type of Spaniel, <laughs> honestly. She's also like, although apparently she's quite like, she does a lot of good work and mm -hmm. Is a very active member of the royal family. But see, that's the thing. Like, if you look at Edward, I forget where Edward is in the line, whether it's um, Charles, Andrew, Edward, or Charles, Edward, Andrew. I, I think all. Andrew's out. No, but like in the birth order. Oh, Edward is the youngest. Okay. I'm fairly like, certain. There's a point, too, where you look at his life and it's fairly uneventful. Yeah. Just because you are the son, brother, grandson of a monarch doesn't necessarily mean that you know all the attention's on you at all times he's also one millionth in line to the throne so yeah <laughs> there is yeah. that yeah like there'd have to be quite the epidemic that hit the palace <laughs> in order to get him there but like, like there, there wasn't there my point is that there was a point where he was like second or third in line yeah and that's true he would have been third i think there's but that is true actually He's managed to live his life to the point where it's like, Edward, who the frick is Edward? Yeah, that's true. And his kids, too. I mean, his kids are younger. They're still both, like, in school. I'll take your word for it. Yeah. Um, so they haven't had the opportunities to be in the media as much either. <laughs> they haven't had the chance to be quite as scandalous lately. Yeah. Like, they're not at the age where they're out partying and, yeah. like, doing all of those wild and reckless things that young people do. So... But yeah, like, you don't, you forget about him. Like, it, it is possible to be a member of the royal family and fly under the radar. Yeah, that's true. So, but, I don't know, it's, I liked the queen. I oh. think she was cool. Yeah, <laughs> mad respect for her. Thing is, she was raised in a very, very different royal family. Mm -hmm. Like, it was, keep your mouth shut, never complain, never explain. Yeah. And... She's held that for the last 96 or six, seven years, whatever it was. And that was always her, her bottom line. But she... Never confirm. Was never supposed to be queen. No. That's no. the other thing. Like, her uncle abdicated. Yeah. So her dad became king. Because he married an American deagle, say. Yes. And then her dad became king. So if that hadn't happened, it would be a very different royal family. Mm-hmm. You know? Maybe less balding. <laughs> oh, we'd have better genetics. Why does that bother you so much, the balding? <laughs> Honestly, it's nothing compared to the Habsburgs, but it's one of those things where I just find it somewhat hilarious. It's funny, though, because, like, Charles still has a full head of hair. Yeah. So, I don't know. But you look at the uh, uncles. Yeah. It's, oh, Philip. Philip still had a decent amount of hair. He was definitely balding, but it wasn't, like, it wasn't as bad as William. <laughs> um, sorry, that one core. of the things that it just amuses me is... The, his and Kate's royal wedding I saw a couple pictures from it where it was like top down view and all oh. you saw was just his shiny little head <laughs> it's I like, know wear a hat dude I know you can't really tell from this picture on the cover <laughs> of the they, book they cut that off but Harry has that too <laughs> Harry's less hairy now <laughs> oh, oh anyway. yeah I yeah it's one of those things it's, where I'm going I don't care about him anymore now than I did before yeah and I feel bad for the kids of any royal people. But also, and I know you don't feel this way, but I am wildly fascinated by the royal family. 
it just like i can't say i'm i don't understand celebrity honestly it's not something i don't understand the desire to be famous yeah like, just to me it's but unfathomable this is, this is a different and, type of celebrity though oh, definitely this is like celebrity by birth like to me i'm like do i want to be rich yeah sure of course i could go to the moon then <laughs> but do i want the fame that comes along with being rich quite a lot of the time no i don't i want to be rich and nobody know who i am yeah like well it's possible it's possible i don't know if nobody but you can have a quieter life and still be rich you yeah. don't have to be famous but like i don't understand the people that actively try to be famous yeah and the people that are famous i don't understand why like if it was me you would you could bet that i would be doing everything possible to stay under the radar yeah like it's yeah yeah i don't know <laughs> i found the queen interest in the rest of the royal family i don't care about Put it that way. i think see when i was a kid my mom checked out a bunch of books on ro- the royals for us because she wanted us to know who they were i read them yep <laughs> basically where i stopped <laughs> were like, okay. i don't care whoop de doo but will and kate got married on my birthday and i don't care <laughs> It's just... But you remember. Yeah. I couldn't have told you what day they got married. Mm, it was on my birthday. I knew it was April. on my birthday. You knew it was April, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. April 29th, 2011. 2011. Mm-hmm. Huh. They've so, been married for over a decade. I was just chuckling to myself because the first half I wrote here in my notes, this is a quote from the book, it's hard to be precise where a shopping bag of weed is concerned. <laughs> <laughs> I was like... Yeah. yeah okay maybe some rehab is i honestly think rehab would be good for him it might be that's not a bad idea oh one of the things that i and i screenshotted it because until i went really hairy um i was never within uh, somebody wrote a article or something about him i was never within 50 meters of miss diaz further proof that if you like reading pure bollocks then royal biographies are just your thing <laughs> really hairy yeah what are we reading right now? <laughs> Pure bollocks, apparently. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes. Like, well, it's, it's just that kind of book. But now we have read it. It does make me feel a little bit more sorry for William. <laughs> <laughs> just, I don't oh, know. <laughs> I wish they had a sister. They could have used a sister, I feel like. Yeah. That's the thing. Like, honestly, of all the royal kids, Prince Charlotte, I find the most interesting she's like she seems like she's a bit of a pistol mm-hmm. i think so it's just some like the little video clips or whatever i've seen of her where it's like she's going no george you have to bow yeah or he's like doing like gonna clap or something and she's like <laughs> nope slapping his hands down <laughs> i know i'm like <laughs> she's she seems like she's quite the interesting little kid yeah but i don't know all i can say is i hope the next generation of royals is better than the current one <laughs> Because I think we're due for an upgrade. Oh, I'm just waiting with anticipation for the coronation. Because I keep hearing things like they keep asking people to perform and they keep declining. Oh, really? And I don't know why. It doesn't say in any of the articles why they're not. Like, I think already Elton John. I can understand Elton John. Like, him and Diana were friends to then, like, think about it in regular world context. If your, one of your best friends was asked to perform at your ex-husband and his wife's you know either wedding or coronation or whatever be a bit of a slap in the face well i guess but diana's been gone for a long time i know but still so but and i mean does elton really want to put himself back into the public eye in that regard that's yeah i don't know uh adele is another one i think who said no Mm -hmm. there's i think four i can't remember the others (laughs) you should get beyonce so at least there's a queen present (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> oh, burn on Camilla. <laughs> oh, I've yeah. had zero use for Camilla, honestly. I know. So of those where I'm going, you... Conniving. I've never been a fan. No. But, as we know, I was also a fan of Diana, so... Diana was fine. I could appreciate a lot of things that she did, but as a person, I'm like, I, have, I, I don't care for you. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes. So... Anywho, <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to give you one fun fact Awesome. before we wrap things up. Um, 
So total book sales, including hardcover, audio, and ebook editions, were around 400,000 copies in the United Kingdom during its first day, making it the country's fastest non fastest selling nonfiction book ever. It sold more than 1.4 million copies in all formats in the US, Canada, and the UK on its first day, which was described by Penguin Random House as the largest first day sales total for any nonfiction book it ever published. The book broke the Guinness World Record for the fastest selling nonfiction book of all time, which was previously held by Barack Obama's A Promised Land. So but remember, we want privacy. Yeah, <laughs> I know, right? It's, I know, that's why that South Park video was so funny. Yep. <laughs> leave us alone, leave us alone. Pew, 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 pew. You should watch it. Um, I should find I it and send it to you. But, anyways, mm-hmm. um, so yeah, obviously, people are reading this book, as we know. Mm-hmm. We, you were trying to get the ebook copy from e libraries, well, and there yep. was how many hundreds of holds on it? Uh, last I checked the other day, it was like 397, I think. Yeah. On 15 copies. And that was the book, and the audiobook had almost as many holds. The audiobook correct? was almost as many, yeah. Yeah. So, so, and the audiobook, I feel like with this one, has been wildly popular as well, mm-hmm. unlike any other audiobook, probably because of the fact that he narrates it. Yeah. Or yeah. reads it or whatever. Um, so yeah, that's just... Did you find that the narration was done well? Uh, yeah, I mean, his voice is very, like, it's not hard to listen to. Um, there were some times where I was, like, (sighs) rolling my eyes, but (laughs) it could be more of what he was saying than how he was saying it. Probably. As, like, this was the first full audiobook that I've ever listened to. Oh, okay. So... Nothing really to compare it to. It's, yeah, I have nothing to compare it to. If you like listening to a British accent and, like... His voice is very, like... Posh. It's very easy to listen to. It's not, you know... So, hmm. yeah. I think probably you get a little bit more of the emotion. Yeah, I think you definitely get the nuance behind it. Yeah. But, I don't know, sometimes it's... There's other authors that also do their own audiobooks, mm-hmm. and they are so bad. Yeah. Because they are not... Like, it sounds simple, just read a book. Yeah. But there is a performative aspect to it that... Mm-hmm doesn't seem to be taken into consideration yeah now i think with something like this where you're reading your own life yeah you can put that nuance and emotion into it so you're probably fine yeah as opposed to if you're like an author reading a fiction book you're reading words yeah or like like it's a self-help book or something like that like well maybe a self-help book you can like get the Mm -hmm. whatever just do it (laughs) (laughs) yes yeah um yeah but for sure like the audiobook has become its own thing it's also definitely definitely so i know like the person i follow who loved this book was finding like all kinds of deals on like audiobooks.com and <laughs> audible and like promoting it right like so if you want to read this book if you want to get it for free here's how you can do that mm-hmm. which is how i got the audiobook for free <laughs> so you know um but yeah so i think too like people are promoting it it's getting out there but yeah, it's definitely something. If you... Something that hasn't really been seen before. No. And that's the other thing is, like, this is... This is kind of... Unprecedented for yes. the royal family. And so... It's history in the making. <laughs> I think, like... I think if you're going to read this book, you have to go into it with the idea that this is the world according to Harry. Yes. Take um, everything with a grain of salt. Yeah. It's told from the point of view of an emotionally stunted privileged man (laughs) and we like we will never hear the other side of this story put it this way if harry comes out with a book i'm first in line mainly because i'm flabbergasted you mean if will comes out with a book sorry if will comes out with a book (laughs) edit that so it says will not harry (laughs) but like yeah i we will never we will never get to hear the other side so we basically have to either take him at his word that this is actual truth or, you know, I feel a little skeptical. Take it as his truth, his not truth. as the, the truth. truth. There's yeah. a big difference. Yeah, that's a good way of looking at it, really. It's, so It's a gauge of Harry's emotions throughout the ages. And yeah, in a lot, lot of ways, an indicator as to how he could potentially react in the future unless he changes his ways. It's also a narration on the evilness of the press. Yes. The British press specifically. Which, to a point, yeah, I'm not mad at that part of it. <laughs> no, I mean, they're horrible. I think, like, paparazzi in general. The paparazzi are just going, 
I mean, on the one hand, writing for them sounds like kind of fun because I can just write anything <laughs> yeah. and I don't have to worry about getting any kind of evidence. It's basically just fiction. Yeah. And there's obviously a market for it. Yeah. But I don't want to ruin people's lives. <laughs> no. And there's good money in it, too. So mm-hmm. do I recommend this book? I... Honestly, I'm not sure. I... I honestly don't know about recommending it. Yeah. I, I if, want to feel sympathy for him. I do. Yeah. But there's a part of me that can't. Exactly. It's still a very, very privileged man whining about his life. Yeah. I don't know. On the one hand, if you're interested in the royals, sure, read it. If you're not interested in the royals, don't. Yeah. Like, it's it's not worth suddenly having an interest. There's no startling revelations. Mm -hmm. There's nothing nothing that you couldn't already deduce if you paid any sort of attention to anything in the last, you know, several decades. I think when we talked about the first half, I felt very passionately like... Well, this is how he was brought up. He doesn't know any better. But also, he was younger mm-hmm. then, right? Like, I feel totally different now. To a certain extent, I still feel that way. I like, still feel bad for the kid that you, he was. You are a product of your upbringing, for sure. But now, he's a grown man. Mm-hmm. And he can start taking responsibility for some of that. He can do things to change it. And as much as he says he's trying to change it, I don't think he really is. I think... I don't know. He wants to do things his own way, mm-hmm. but still... He wants still, to have everything. Yeah. He wants to have the money. He wants to have the fame to actually put, you know, some oomph behind his causes, but without anybody ever questioning anything that he does. And don't expect anything from me. Exactly. And just let me live my life how I want to live it, but let me still have all the benefits of the royal life. Exactly. Yeah. So... I don't know. He's... Uh, He's not my favorite person in the world. This book has not changed that. I don't think anything ever will unless he, you know, cures cancer or something. (laughs) He's not going to do that. No. (laughs) Honestly, this book is one of those things where I'm going, on the one hand, like, there's a lot of books that are overhyped. Yeah. Where it's really, like, I'm sorry, Colleen Hoover. (laughs) (laughs) She is so crazy popular. And we've read the one book by her. And was it well written? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Was it a good book? No. Like, there's just so much hype behind it Mm -hmm. that it doesn't really live up to it. Yeah. This one, there's so much hype behind it, not because of its content, Mm -hmm. but because of its unprecedentedness. Mm -hmm. So you can't really even say it doesn't live up to the hype because the hype is not about the book itself. Yeah. But that's the thing about hype, though. I feel like nothing ever or hardly ever lives up to the hype. Because yeah. if you if something is hyped up so much, you have high expectations. You have astronomically high right? expectations. Right? And so it's never as good as what you expect it to be, I feel like. Yeah. Certain cases. Like Disney World, yeah, it lives up to the hype for sure. For me. I'll take your word for it. <laughs> I, I figured you would. But, you know, like when something is so hyped, there's always going to be, I think, a certain level of disappointment or yeah, whatever because it can't... And, like, a lot of the hyped books, it's like, okay, even if the book itself is not fantastic, I shouldn't say the story itself is not fantastic, um, there's, you can still kind of go, well, this book's not for me, you know, mm-hmm. somebody else, yeah, sure, read it. Yeah. But with this book, I'm kind of going, honestly, if you have an interest in the royal family, mm-hmm. I don't know that this will impact it. If you don't have an interest in the royal family, I don't think this will impact it. Yeah. Like, I think it's just very... Blah. There, there's no startling revelations in this book for me. Not really. Like, it's Harry's whiny, <laughs> and the royal family is a little bit racist and not the greatest people in the world. And I'm going, we all knew that to begin yeah, with. Exactly. Like, it should be called My Life According to Me. Yeah. I am glad, one thing I will say, I'm glad with this book, there's very little about his kids. Yeah. Like, we kind of went through their birth and the laughing gas thing, and Archie broke an ornament on the tree and sprayed it with water because he thought he'd fix it. Yeah. Like, yeah, it's that is cute little anecdote. He obviously cares about his kids so much, but like, thank you for not putting them in this book because mm-hmm. they don't need that. No. Nobody, nobody ever needs to read about like, oh, Archie was running around without any diaper on. It was, it was hilarious, hilarious. <laughs> because Archie's going to have to deal with that later mm-hmm. down the line. Also, his kids haven't done a ton to be really noteworthy. Exactly. They They're are not still old enough. babies. So, yeah, leave them out of it. And yep. I'm glad he did. Yep. So, yeah. They are. They deserve their own peace. Yep. Well, yeah. If Her- uh, William writes a book, I'll read it. Absolutely. I, I don't think... kind of don't ever want to read this book. <laughs> William, if you're out there. <laughs> uh, 
uh, he's never doing it. He's never doing it. And just, I can't blame him. Just write it and send it to us. Nobody <laughs> else needs to know. <laughs> just just between uh, us, William. What's the real story? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> No. I'll figure out a way to get this to him. <laughs> I wish you all the best of luck. <laughs> if our teeny tiny little podcast reaches the future King of England's ears, that will be a miracle in itself. And I'll go buy a lottery ticket. Okay. Yeah. Well then. <laughs> That's, I think, our final bit. <laughs> the end. The end. <laughs> So that's what we thought of the book. But those are just our opinions, of course. Uh, we'd like to hear yours, so leave us a comment. Thanks for joining us for Between the Lines. And thanks for editor Linda for making sense of our mess. And we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.